Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox and hello War of the Visions fans. Today we're going to be testing out a couple of units in free match. That's going to be Shurika and the Veritas units. And even more specifically, Veritas of the Winds, who's going to show up on both of these teams. Now another commonality that both these teams have is that they will not be featuring full 120 units uh, for at least one unit on each composition. Despite that, Shurika still manages to be the fastest on this team. So that's pretty impressive already. And this team is pretty intimidating uh, to go up against even now, as is the full Veritas team. And previously, I had thought of that team as just a joke. Now, neither of these are unbeatable, and obviously, I think the skill ceiling for free match is a lot lower, in that even some of the most powerful players in the game are more willing to test things out in this format, much like these teams here. So, let's show you the stats for these teams. We'll start with the Veritas team. Now, because this team is really mixed, the vision cards are really generic, so the stats are not going to be as impressive as they could be. With Veritas of the Waters coming in at under 1500 of her attacking power and under 10,000 HP, so she's really going to be relying on Veritas of the Earth and his auras to keep her in the battle, and she's not going to be doing a tremendous amount of damage herself. This also kind of shows the weakness of the Veritas themselves, their kind of weakness in stats compared to new units. Only above 10,000 HP and about 1,000 attacking power for Veritas of the Earth, though he's the young unit here. 12,000 and just over 1,500 for Veritas of the Winds. But I want you to notice the difference in stats for Veritas of the Winds. Once we get him on a team, it's more to his liking in terms of vision cards. We've got 1,700 attack and just high of 1,305 for Offensive power, I'll show you Shuriken in a second. 1600 or 16,000 HP and pretty decent attacking power, but Shurik already at level 117, over 11,000 HP and over 1600 attack. So, very good in both of those stats and the fastest thing on my team. She has a pretty neat uh, main sub job, but I think it's probably better to run her as Blade Soul even though I haven't gone to the trouble of maxing out the abilities for this job yet. But also, you know, she gets more like magic and general spirit penetration, so maybe that isn't the best job for her anyways, even though it adds a lot of fun things to her kit. So, one of the first videos here, though, is going to show her off at a pretty low level. I think she may even be like level 99 for this, because I got a good bit of footage for her as I was building her up because the leveling process from level 99 to 120 if you don't have the rainbow exp cubes to just do it automatically is kind of a pain but what I've been doing is running background repeats on battle tens in story because those tend to have a bit more experience to them and I've been leveling her up that way to save myself on the exp cubes. But you can see she's already doing pretty good. Her buffs look really powerful and she's getting them off pretty consistently. I didn't have my party set up quite right for this, so the Keen Blade didn't go off quite as well as I wanted it to. And I think it also means that her power up, her attacking power up buff did not apply to Veritas of the Winds, which would also be pretty helpful here. But they, while having a more mixed team, have their ice unit up front, so this could be some serious trouble for us. We can see Shurika here already doing pretty decent damage, although her follow-up skill isn't doing a lot. Uh, pretty good resistances, I think, to slashing attacks, keeping Taunting Blade's damage low. And we have a pretty full heal here. This could be backbreaking, honestly. Um, but as you can see, she has a 7500 HP barrier, and even a fully leveled Cloud is not able to deal more than 7500 damage to her. However, A2, being an Ice unit, was able to do a lot more now that that HP barrier has been reduced greatly. So she's in trouble, but let's see what she can do on offense here with Far Explosion. Not the hugest damage. Good HP healed back on that, though. Taunting Blade still isn't doing what I need it to. 
But Farsplosion did pin Cloud back, and that's going to be helpful for her. Maybe it'll redirect this heal a little bit. Ah, Isunaga. So she went for the status healing. So we've got through A2. That was the really scary thing for this team. We've healed back a bit, but we could use some help. Our tank is in the back, which is not ideal, and we are very clustered. So Cloud's going to be able to do a lot of damage here, but not enough to deal with Shurika, and not enough to deal with Veritas of the Winds either. I have no idea why Shurika didn't use some sort of a magical skill there. It doesn't make any sense to me, because she definitely had the AP to use literally anything in her kit. She just didn't. As you can see, we are definitely getting our damage in here. We got a pretty clutch paralysis proc on their healer. That's going to shut her out of the game. Now we're going to see Shurika's LB. So again, level 99, so really weak here, but doing pretty consistent damage here. It's also important to remember <clears throat> that her damage being particularly high versus Cloud is pretty important because he's got a lot of ways to mitigate magical damage which is going to make closing this game out pretty hard for Dario, but at the same time, we do have Berserk, so that's going to be helpful for us. Because this match is kind of slowing down into a slap fight, and with re-raise, I mean, I guess he's surviving due to courage, so we both have reasons that we survived, but he was doing enough damage with his basic hits that that would have closed the match out if it hadn't been basically the last turn. So that was a pretty even matchup, and that's showing you kind of strengths and weaknesses for Shurika, but a lot of her matches went very much in her favor. This is another one where our formation is a little bit out of sync, but we have a pretty excellent team, and also this is going to be able to show off one of the Veritas units as well on the opposing side, which I'm going to take the advantage of doing where I can. We did lose a lot of matches here, but we also got matched up a lot into very Earth-centric teams for whatever reason. I didn't show any of those videos because they ended about exactly as you would have imagined. So I tried to include some of these more interesting matchups that had better and more varied units than maybe is typical of class match. So while I am removing a lot of my failures here, there weren't as many of them, and really I'm removing a lot more successes, and a lot more successes that would have been pretty painfully obvious to use the audience at the outset. So I'm trying to show you the more interesting matches. Also, uh, interesting note for this match, it really nerfs Veritas the Winds. He's going to be on all of our teams, and he's going to be using his Haste stance in all of them. However, this map nullifies Haste, so that really isn't doing a whole lot for him. So, really, think of him as having a bit of a handicap on this match, because he definitely is within his basic buff rotation. That's going to be Lunacestus Castone's TMR, and hopefully that's going to keep units like Ashen Mont from targeting her with her two with his two target skills. This could also help with two target skills from Joom, because as long as Shurika maintains her negative hate, it's gonna be difficult for any two target skills to hit her while she's in range like this. Or more specifically while everyone's in range like this. See, Mont doesn't even try to get a position to potentially do this damage to Shurika. So he's hitting basically the two units that are best resistant to earth damage in general. And Dario is even going to heal afterwards to make the damage completely neutral. Shurika is coming in to clean things up and now we just have Veritas on the back row. Even her LB isn't going to bring this match back for her. It has already been very, very well lost. And this is one of the issues for Veritas of the Waters in that, in addition to having a bit of a healing mindset in some cases, she also can, because of her lower speed than a lot of modern units, really get stuck in the back row in a way that can be helpful for her as a healer. But if she's not capable of healing for them, and she's not the best healing unit, um, being in the back can really just cause her allies to lose and then her to just lose a secondary fight like this, uh, 3v1, that she's definitely not suited for. 
This was a team that gave me a lot more trouble because it always gives me a lot of trouble. This is a very solid team going into the Shuriken meta and I might have a better chance against it fully awakened, but Gilgamesh here especially is just going to do a lot of things that are going to hurt me. <laughs> Luckily, this is a more magically based team. In a modern Summer Glacella, that's not going to help as much against her specifically, but that is going to help uh, work around her physical damage negation aura, which is going to be really helpful for her friends here. Also, interestingly enough, if you use on this team the Chocobo float on Summer Glacella, then the whole team can have float for whatever reason, and I never really think that the float passive is worth it, so I don't typically tend to have floating characters on my teams, even where it's possible. And for whatever reason, they did choose to make Sephiroth float, but not Gilgamesh. As you can see, Gilgamesh is still kind of ground-bound, despite his wings. So finally, we're getting into range here. Again, Haste Stance isn't doing much for Veritas of the Winds, and we're getting our tank to get like one last turn before their team which is going to help get him out in front and help draw attacks again Sephiroth much like Cloud in the previous clip was not able to break through the HP barrier here for Shurika but I think Gilgamesh is going to do a lot more damage to our team luckily he's only targeting Dario and Dario is pretty good at dealing with magic damage although he did get hit with Frostbite Frostbite isn't nearly as bad for mages, and look at this fucking champ here just tanking their entire team. Even with the extra damage proc, he got an extra healing in, that's really keeping him safe here. LB coming in from Shurika, this is hopefully going to be pretty impactful. Really didn't do a whole lot, we're seeing that native magic resistance there from Summer Glacella, but she did remove their AP auto restore, which is pretty helpful here, especially since we're not running Veritas the Winds TMR. We did get the follow-up KO on Sephiroth, but he procced re-raise and she procced her HP heal. We're still taking damage here from Dario, but he's just now going down, which means he has a re-raise left. So we're still not out of the game with him yet, and we're about to start getting some turns. Really wish he would have used his draining skill, but disabling Sephiroth is very helpful here. Unfortunately though, Gilgamesh still got the double KO here. And now all we have is Shurika. So Shurika is dealing well with her tank, but that shouldn't be a surprise to you. She's dealt with the disabled Sephiroth and done pretty good damage to Glacella. Glacella, as long as she doesn't move in, is not going to be able to probably target her from that range. Yep, she's going to go for her buff. So Shurka could still win this mate. Nope, nope, not looking like it. Oh well. And also her HP uh, drain has run out, so she's no longer healing herself back up. Not that it would have mattered, I think even in max HP, that attack from Gugamesh would have taken her down. And I told you I was going to show you a loss for each team, so let's get a loss for the Veritas in here as well. Really, this team has surprised me a lot, and unfortunately, with limited guild battle showing up exactly when it did, I am just maybe two guild battles short of 120-ing Veritas of the Earth, and... You know, by the time Limited Guild Battle ends, we'll have 140 for him, and I'll maybe be another four battles away. So like a solid week after Limited Guild Battle, I should be able to 140 him for the first time. And by then, I'm hoping on this account that I'll also have the Guardian's Crystal. The Guardian's Crystal is going to be a big upgrade for this, both of these teams, actually. Um, you could think of it going on veritas of the winds in either case and i think that's probably the most applicable place to put it right now as he's probably one of the better suited members of this team but he's also the one that shows up on both sides on the win team he's going to be the only option for the guardians crystal and that should pump his stats up to be quite respectable on that team i mean probably like 2k HP and 15, um, I'm sorry, 2k attack and 15,000 HP. 
So anyways, this match is also a good showcase of, I think an even stronger Veritas of the Earth, showing off what he can do on an Earth team. And as you can see, quite capable. We're having a lot of trouble getting through Ashenmont at his side. Really, got to apologize for anybody who can hear that, but I'm hoping that I can noise cancel that out of the recording. We're also seeing how impactful the stun here can be on his LB. His LB is really powerful and impactful in, in fights, and I've seen it completely turn the tides, especially when, you know, he has a pretty good AoE on it, and he's a good unit to have out in front. Naturally, you want to have your tank out in front anyways, so he's good for just sweeping up the entire enemy team uh, much like they've swept me in this match, unfortunately. So we really haven't been able to do much damage or keep up with the healing of the other team. And unfortunately, we still have a unit that is currently stunned. But we are going to give him CT up so we can get out of his stun faster, I guess. And thankfully, coming in clutch, and this is the place that we could have won the fight. Unfortunately, we didn't get quite enough healing there because we got the healing power down from Cypher onto Veritas of the Earth. But with this paralysis, if this paralysis procs pretty often, then we have a chance to take out their team. The problem is their Veritas of the Earth is going to hold us back from that pretty well. But I think this was actually, you know, this one could have been a toss up. And really the thing that helped us out the most uh, this is a good example of those off cases when Veritas of the Waters is absolutely going to come in clutch because those statuses are just going to ruin your opponent's chances of winning. That being said, they did manage to survive through it thanks to a really incredible tank being able to heal through us, and that has allowed them to take the fight to this point. <laughs> Oh, also paralysis didn't work that last time there for Cypher, and he was able to finish it off while still paralyzed. Oof. So, shifting back to our wind footage, we're back on the Icy Mountain map. This is going to be, I think, one of the better setups. Because Shurka moved first, she applied her damage up to the entire team. That's good. This is also going to be a greatsword team. This is a pretty general greatsword team, except that it's using old cloud instead of new cloud, which is a bit of a power limitation for it, but I think there's enough strengths to this team that it is still a pretty valid opponent, even if it's a little bit off of what you would usually expect for this team. Oh my god, the construction sounds have gotten worse. So we're getting our setup well, and we've kind of accelerated Dario to the point where he's getting a turn a little bit before everybody else. So he's staying a good bit out in front for us, again, like a good tank should. And hopefully this is going to allow him to just eat up the AP of our other team. Shurka found an opportunity to strike at A2 from the back row, but A2 is able to dodge this. But she has clearly drawn Shurika's attention. Okay, so we've started to build a bit of a chain on her. And Dario has healed himself back up from his encounter with her earlier. He's very good as a tank for being able to heal himself back after dangerous encounters. But he can only do this so quickly. And, wow, we can already see the kind of wild damage that Shurika is capable of, even against targets that resist her once their barriers have been broken through a little bit. As I remember, I think A2 has a pretty good physical or some sort of barrier um, that maybe Dario was able to break through for Shurika. Maybe she just doesn't have a magical barrier at all. In any case, I'm really impressed at the damage that Shurka was able to do, even versus an ice unit in this case. 
because she's definitely pretty much single-handedly taking her out there from the Brack Row, which also emphasizes the kind of dominating range that Shurik can have at some times. Now, she's not going to be attacking from range with big AoE skills, big diamonds, the way that some characters have, and a lot of characters will actually use those diamond AoEs to supplement their range, making some of their attacks a little bit awkward. But for Shurika, she's going to have a lot more focus on single target attacks. Having both unit attack resistance penetration being one of the first, being the first character in the game to get that ability, but also having a lot of ways of breaking single target resistance and powering her single target attacks up, and she has quite powerful ones. We're still not seeing a, a three target attack in the same way that we saw with Aliyah the Alabaster, but that's largely been considered a gameplay mistake, and I think that the game wouldn't move towards that. That being said, she is pretty damn powerful with two target attacks, which are pretty strong themselves, even if they're not game-breaking OP in the way that three target attacks are. So I also wanted to try out the Veritas on this new map, so let's see what they do against a light magic team. It's a pretty strong team, and it's actually pretty close to uh, the units that I've been running for a while in Guild Battle. With the exception they don't have Helen of the Black Rose, who I think is probably one of the more meaningful and impactful units for this. It's kind of saying something that their newest unit is Addison Ray, but this team has a good theme and a good dream, so maybe they'll be an adequate opponent for my admittedly fairly awkward team itself. But let's see all the Veritas can do in this matchup. As we can see, Veritas the Winds is using that jump to get himself up and out of range of this AoE. And that really is a range height thing, because they are definitely within the diamond together, it's just that she can't target him, because he's way too high up for her to hit while also hitting Veritas the Earth, who has the hate. We've got the barrier up, so this is going to give us a damage reduction. That's going to be really helpful for Veritas the Winds, who doesn't naturally have a lot of magic resistance, but Veritas of the Waters, who is still way too far back to be targeted at this moment, has pretty good uh, magic resistance herself. So with the addition of the magic resistance from the Aura here, that should be pretty powerful. Also, good to see that Veritas of the Winds is accurate enough to deal with evasion units. This should also be a pretty helpful benefit um, from Veritas of the Waters too, but we can also see now that Veritas of the Winds has gotten down closer to the level with the other characters that he's now started to be included in these AoE attacks. But we have got rid of Addison Ray, who is the newest unit on this team, so probably their stronger unit, especially now that we know that we can hit Helen or Elena pretty reliably. That being said, she did manage to overwhelm Veritas of the Earth. Thankfully, he got hit with a reviving stream from Veritas of the Waters, so he did have re-raise and he is able to stay in this fight. And with the Mantle Fortress, he's basically back up to HP. Gotta love this guy. He is just indomitable in his ability to heal himself because you'll notice while I am using Veritas of the Waters here as a white mage, she's not having to use any of her heals in these fights. Not that she's particularly inclined to anyways. Speaking of using heals though, Sylvie has brought Addison Ray back to life and then that was just as easily countered by putting a big chain on her. She is now stunned thanks to Veritas of the Earth getting out in front. And because of this, the other two Veritas have basically not taken any damage this fight. All, pretty much all the damage has been taken by Veritas of the Earth at all times, and he has managed to survive through it and even heal back most of it all by himself. All while keeping his auras up and keeping the rest of my team, which is not especially good against magic, able to survive these three magic attackers. Pretty good combination here. And really, like, the more I play these three together, the more I realize that they do kind of everything. They have a really great and powerful synergy in their kit. Um, not for any particularly obvious reasons. They're just really good together and really good at fighting and supporting each other. Like, they, they fill in each other's gaps well in a way that's hard to explain 
outside of just showing you video of them coming together to beat people. But, uh, you know, it's really good to have a stopgap on Veritas the Earth. Reviving Stream does a great job of that, um, especially into these Earth matchups. Both Veritas of the Earth and Veritas of the Winds have great Earth resistance, so they can both be great into this. You throw Elemental Fortress on top of that, and neither of these characters are really taking that much damage from Earth units. Like, they're, they're just a really good combination together for a variety of reasons. Um, there may not be a lot of guaranteed hit here, but both Folka and Veritas of the Winds can be pretty accurate. On top of that, Folka can actually reduce evasion, which can make even heavily evasive targets, even targets that Foco would miss, a lot more hittable by Veritas of the Winds. So they have a really good way of getting around evasion in a lot of cases. And you're seeing in a fight like this that they're not really having any trouble with a more evasive team like this. Also, no surprise that Moraga can't break that 7500 HP barrier. He did... Uh, resist Veritas of the Wind's damage pretty well, I will say. But he is a tank, you know, that's... All of this is kind of to be expected. He is a versus physical tank. Uh, no haste on this map is really bad for that TMR skill. So, Riddle, uh, if you're watching, maybe reconsider using that particular TMR on this map. I can't really do a whole lot about having a half-dead buff in Veritas of the Winds rotation, but uh, you can change your TMR. Because <laughs> that reaction block rate is kind of cool, but if you're not getting the haste, you know, that's really why you're using it, right? We've had multiple physical units attacking Veritas of the Earth, and collectively they have not done more than 7,500 HP of damage to him. He hasn't even had to heal for this match. So you can see how incredibly resistant he can be to physical teams, but also it should be noted that a part of why he is this good is because I'm using his elemental passives and a lot of the elements that I've showcased here, you know, he has pretty good resistances to because of that. All right, so this is mostly a great sword team. There's a little bit of light synergy here too, so kind of light great sword, a team that is pivoting largely around Cloud, but still probably including Summer Kilfe as a bonus unit here. Some light synergy between those two units as well. But definitely one of the weaker units on the team, one of the older ones, despite being maybe a sentimental favorite of mine. Uh, I am interested in seeing her play, and I am excited to see her playing on a team this strong, which might be strong enough to carry her through, right? Even if she's not the most amazing unit, if she's finishing people off or maybe removing courage or some of the things that she does really well, or even afflicting slow to negate haste, all these things could really support this team well. So as long as nobody's relying on her to be the main damage dealer, I don't think Cloud or Joom are, she could be a really great addition to this team. Provided that she stays back, because her being only a semi-evasive unit is definitely not going to help against a team that has pretty strong native accuracy and good matchups into uh, evasive type characters. But as you can see, we didn't do a lot of damage to June. Once again, Cloud unable to pierce level 115 Veritas of the Earth. We're seeing that Cloud and Joom in combination, both of their attacks together were not able to do more than 7500 damage, but because we've already started breaking through Joom's barriers and because we're now attacking with magic, uh, I'm sorry, physical instead of magic, which she is attuned to deal with. Uh, we're really getting her in a dangerous place. I think we've triggered her courage, so this should take her down for good. Yep. Didn't get any stuns, though, unfortunately. But I am still happy with this result. <laughs> it also looked like a lot of Cloud's resistances have been whittled away at this point. Damn, 
Okay, so the whole fucking team has hit Veritas of the Earth, and no one has managed to crack that 7500 HP barrier. I am a little bit impressed that Kelfe was able to survive that. Courage proc for Cloud. A fourth attack on Veritas of the Earth. None have cracked that barrier yet. And the whole, the, the whole team did nothing but try to do damage to Veritas of the Earth, and none of them were worthy. That's pretty intense. Um, this guy's gonna be scary at 140. I'm just warning y'all now. Like, I've tried to raise the profile of the other Veritas units because I love their design. I think they're so cool. Especially these first ones, uh, you know, just for me, having English voice acting for them is important. Uh, that it's a realization of a dream of an FFBE player to finally hear these characters talk. Um, so there's a lot of reasons that I want to do that, but Veritas of the Earth specifically, even though he's probably the hardest of the three to build, by f you know, even though he's re released later, just in general, harder to build in some ways. I mean, I like him because he, he basically builds in background. Um, you don't have to do anything extra to get his shards, but uh, yeah, this guy's going to be a real, real trouble for win teams. I mean, for physical teams to get through. Wind being more centered in magic with Shurika is really going to be a good way to counter him. But I think a lot of general physical teams are just going to suffer against this guy. Okay, so that's going to do a lot of things for us, including limiting our healing options and also I think reducing our fire resistance. The trade-off, though, is that once she gets in range, she cannot take a hit. So, let's see what Sephiroth can do here. It looks like we're getting an LB. So, let's see if Curse lands on any of our characters. Yes, two of them. <clears throat> well, that's very much not good. Curse is especially bad on Veritas of the Earth. If he can take care of Soul, though, he shouldn't have any trouble enduring... Oh, close enough. Shouldn't have that much trouble enduring Sephiroth because of his HP barrier. We've seen how effective that is against physical characters. They just can't crack it. Um, so as long as we can factor Soul out of this fight, yep. Uh, we shouldn't need healing for Veritas of the Earth. But in theory, that's really bad for him. Because getting rid of his ability to just quickly heal himself back up, that's pretty important. I would say. And this team, Sephiroth here, has managed to crack that barrier, is managing to do damage to Veritas of the Earth, so we are starting to get into that zone. And he's, honestly, he's resisting my damage a lot better than I thought he would. Like, he's making a one-man stand against this team. Should have re-raise left. Yep. So maybe getting one more chance to crack. Yep. Still didn't manage to take anybody out. Healed himself up, back up a bit, but it's, I don't think it's going to be enough because we're all getting turns before him. But uh, definitely stood up for himself quite well. And also another interesting thing there for Veritas of the Earth, if he is in curse mode... He will still use his healing skill, but it's cool to have an HP barrier that he can essentially use to technically heal himself in advance versus physical damage, even when he can't technically heal himself. It's a pretty cool way to technically get around Curse. And it's not something that's necessarily specific to Veritas of the Earth. He's, as a tank, a very good example of making that barrier last a long time. And also it being a physical barrier, like Dario had this ability on my other team. You didn't see it as often because he has a, a uh, an HP barrier for magical attacks. So it didn't come in handy as often. This HP barrier for physical attacks though is quite, quite awesome. Um, and this is the kind of thing that's been added into the game over the last couple of years a lot more specifically. So a lot of characters are ending up with these. So if you see someone who's just not taking damage... If you pay attention to their buffs, that was probably why. These these barriers are pretty nuts. 
especially when you have a character that has already a really high HP pool and a character that is carrying with him for a number of turns now a barrier or an aura that's going to be reducing all damage for his teammates. This guy is just a really good core to a party because you're going to see teams like this that can take magic damage good at first, they have barriers that can take damage well at first, but uh, as long as nobody takes out Veritas of the Earth, he's going to be applying his damage reduction to the rest of his party. That being said, we're not in the best place here, but Summer Resnick is staying in the back. She does seem to be wearing her summer floaties, <laughs> as we can see. Let's see if we can get a stun here. Stun, 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 stun. Yes, LB. Okay, we got a we got one stun. That's pretty good. I'm not mad at that. Man, that applies a lot of effects. But we're seeing that early uh, small HP heal. Actually putting in a good bit of work on him. He's doing a good bit of damage, but... Uh, and that could have been really, really bad if Juma had been around to follow that up. Because that would have kept chains on two of my characters. One of them who is about to go down if she gets hit by anything. Ironically, the one who took Doom down, too. <laughs> and we're seeing also the power of regen on a character like this. And as his HP gets proportionally higher as he levels up, that amount regen and the amount restored by his other skill are going to increase as well. So looking at just like a passive 1500 HP every turn is pretty great for him, especially when he can just proc off eight to 9,000 HP as a heal, maybe into like 140 or so. So... Hey, he is durable often like and this is something I showed earlier in my testing with this team but uh, often he's more durable than the rest of the team unfortunately which can sometimes make AoE resistance maybe like one of the most important stats for this team because he's pretty good at maintaining hate too like he'll get an, a team to attack him the whole time but they may attack with AoE skills that will also get his allies included. Now you're already going to be protected by his aura if you're in AoE range of him. So that's cool. That's a native sort of AoE resistance in a way. Because he's the tank, you know, for some technical reasons. So throwing in some additional like real AoE resistance into that equation can be really helpful for keeping these guys alive. And I can't guarantee you that that was a priority when I was building the vision cards for this team but it should have been and I think I will try to make it so if I can luckily Joom is out of H or AP here and uh, we're restoring our HP we do have some healing power down issues but uh, the game is drawing to a close uh, we're having trouble working through their units but luckily their healer is paralyzed so she's not going to do much about us chipping our way through this dream slowly but surely. Got rid of the courage. Come on. Nope. Well, we win for having more units in HP, so fair enough. And that's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I really wanted to show these characters off because usually I don't see characters below 120 like it's been a while since we got beyond 120 for the competitive scene you know 140 has been out for a while um i would say that fully reincarnated characters are becoming more and more common and standard within play so it's really shocking to see characters at level 115 already performing like this but in addition to that, for the Veritas, and the reason that I'm including them in this, even though Shurika is the new unit, and clearly the more hype of the, the units we're talking about here, is because they have the Guardian Crystal coming out for them, I think, next week. It looks like, from timing things, it's going to be in the next update. So, you've got a few more days to farm up your Veritas Crystals. You're going to need, I think it's like 945 to get the 63 recipes required to get a plus 5 guardian crystal but this will 
ramp the stats of the Veritas units so incredibly that I think they will truly become a force to be reckoned with for the first, maybe for the first time in, in competitive uh, world of history. As you can see, they're already kind of sub-competitive from these tests, but I think that having an equipment that will really jack their stats into uh, the stratosphere and also um, Veritas of the Earth being able to 140 so there will finally be a fully 140 Veritas team. I think these two things are going to just increase stonks for Veritas in general. Not that I'm ex exactly recommending that you just play the first three Veritas at 140. Even if you can do that. It's not really the best team. They're just cool units and I love playing with them. It's fun to play. It is probably never going to be competitive, but honestly, it's just really fun to play. So that's why I like it. And I'm just really glad to see them finally getting strong enough and just being on the cusp of being even stronger that they're actually starting to win in these formats. So those are my thoughts on all this. If you have any thoughts yourself, be sure to leave those in the comments. While you're on the way down there, remember the free to play option for YouTube is to like and subscribe to the channel for updates. Also, because I tend to be kind of foul mouthed, you probably heard me drop an F-bomb in this video. You should probably click that bell because YouTube says that's not advertiser friendly and I'm never going to run ads on this channel anyway. So click the bell so you get notified and thank me for not wasting your time with ads. All of that being said, I do need to include a personal ad for myself because I write books. You can find links to those in the description as well as other channels, other YouTube channels, podcasts, other things in the Jackie Fox media universe through the link tree link in the description. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.